sign up for Amazon Prime, and watch popular movies and shows with Prime Video. Get ad-free music. Stream or download millions of songs 24-7. Listen to thousands of stations. Get fast free delivery for groceries, and millions of products, with Prime Delivery, all included with your membership. Click the link in the description below. Today's episode is called, A Night at the Hooterville Hilton. A brochure describing the incomparable shady rest hotel of the future, is prematurely mailed to Centerville Sun Express travel columnist Gladys Stroud, played by Elvia Ullman, in the first of her 19 appearances on the show. Original air date, December 17, 1963. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. you ordered with your name painted on by hand. No doubt. Hey, Mom. Yes, yes, for you, for you. Anything for me? For Billy Joe from the Hollywood Lingerie Company. Better not be black. Uh, uh, or pink. I hope they didn't make a mistake. If they're black, they go in your hope chest and not in your bureau. <laughs> Bobby Joe? Oh, it's my latest selection from the book club. Don't start reading till I get a chance to look at it. <laughs> It's a Hollywood glamour wig. It's guaranteed to bring new excitement into my life or I get my money back. Do I look like a movie star? Yes. Like an old movie star named Harpo Marx. I bet she was beautiful. Oh, the things those silly kids throw away their good money on. <laughs> oh! Oh, I hope it didn't break. That's my genuine scat wrinkle magic youth beauty cream. <laughs> Uncle Joe, aren't you going to take your tie in the closet and see if it lights up the way it's supposed to? In a while. Stroud. You mean you never saw Gladys Stroud's travel column in the Centerville Sun Express? Oh, that Mrs. Stroud. Gee, that's swell, Ma. Oh, sure. Her recommendation can make a hotel. I've been trying to get her here for three years. I wonder what she means by that. Thrilled by your exciting brochure. Same brochure we've been sending her for four years. Never got her excited before. Hm. Wonder what's in here to fire up her boilers. Each floor with its own private bath. That isn't very exciting. Most rooms with screens, fly swatters free on request. I couldn't have done it. Enjoy the summer heat without noisy air conditioning. Well, anyway, she's coming. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Uncle Joe, guess who's coming to stay with us? Gladys Stroud, the newspaper column Stroud. Yeah, I know. 
When I called the Centerville Sun Express to stop her, they told me she was already on her way here. Oh, can you imagine? I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> You called to stop her? You didn't say that, did you? That's what I said. When did you call the Centerville Sun Express to stop her? And why would you do that? Skip when, get to why. Well, as soon as I found out about the mistake, I rushed right into Hooterville and called her right then. Is this going to be something I can take standing up, or is it a sitter? <laughs> Might be a fainter. <laughs> What mistake did you find out about? Well, you remember when I told you about making up that brochure, a Shady Rest Hotel of the Future? You mean the one you were going to use to get a big loan at the bank? The one all about swimming pools and tennis courts? That's the one. Well, I just wanted a few copies of my brochure of the future made up to show to the bank. Uncle Joe. You... Yeah? The way this story is going, put away the knife. <laughs> You ain't the time. I know, but don't put temptation in my path. <laughs> now, go on. So the new man at the print shop made a mistake and he mailed out Uncle Joe's crazy brochure to our regular mailing list. And that's the one Mrs. Stroud got. You mean she's coming here expecting to see a swimming pool and... And tennis courts? And private baths and whatever else What's-His-Name dreamed up. What's-His-Name? She means Uncle... Do I forbid you to mention that person's name. <laughs> Look, Mom, couldn't we just explain the mistake to Mrs. Stroud? Like the owner of the hotel in Greenville tried to explain to her when she found out his new chef was Canadian and not French like he had said in his advertisement? Oh, yes. She practically ran him out of business. She even tried to put him in jail for false advertising. Oh, hello, girl. Anybody talks to him gets her wig taken away. <laughs> and if he knows what's good for him, he better get down to Hooterville and get Mrs. Stroud before she gets on the train and talk her out of coming here. Well, what's he supposed to tell her? That woman's supposed to be a rip-snorting she-devil. Well... He better tell her the truth and beg her to forgive him so she won't close us up for false advertising and so she won't put him in jail. That's my advice to him. Now, hold on just a minute. We're being awful serious about this. Kind of comical when you think about it, just a little mistake. <laughs> a little funny mix-up. Kind of humorous. <laughs> I've got news for him. If making up crazy brochures full of tennis courts, swimming pools, and private baths and getting those brochures sent by mistake to a woman who's more than likely going to close me up and deprive a poor widow of her only means of supporting her three fatherless daughters might be funny to him. But to me, it's a far piece from Barney Google. <laughs> Willie drank his taxi cab. Must be Mrs. Stroud. Now, don't you be afraid of her. You just tell her the truth and throw yourself on her mercy. Good luck, and I'll see you later. Throw myself on her mercy. And I intend to report you to the Better Business Bureau. But, ma'am, it ain't my fault if that meter jumps ten cents when we hit a bump. I always take it off the bill. Yes, when you get caught. I'll see that you're prevented from cheating the public. Listen, ma'am, I got me three kids to support. Gladys Stroud never lets sentiment sway her from her duty to her public. That mercy I'm going to throw myself on, I don't think there's enough there to break the fall. <laughs> It's taken Uncle Joe so long getting back from Hooterville. Well, it probably took him a couple of hours of talking to Mrs. Stroud to get up the nerve to tell her the truth. You think everything's all right then, Mom? Oh, sure. 
By now, he's explained all about the mix-up with the brochures and everything, and she's had a good laugh, and she's on her way back to Centerville. That must be Uncle Joe now. Right this way, Mrs. Stroud. You can see the swimming pool and the tennis courts in the morning. <laughs> does have to leave first thing in the morning. Train doesn't get here till 11 o'clock. Now she's still gonna wanna see the tennis courts and swimming pool. I'm gonna tell her the truth. Now, get a hold of yourself, Kate. I've got it all planned. Floyd and Charlie are gonna have the train here at 8.30 instead of 11. But it's crazy. She'll be here tonight. We'll never make Mrs. Stroud think she's in a hotel with private bath, swimming pools, and tennis courts. Well, it's the bowling alley and the indoor ice skating rink that's gotten me worried. <laughs> ice skating rink? <laughs> Uncle Joe, what else did you put in that brochure? You better tell me. Well, there's, there's no sense in us both being sick. Just put yourself in my hands, Kate. I got you into this trouble, and I'm going to get you out. Now, just say to yourself, I'm leaving myself in Uncle Joe's capable hands. I just wish there was something less ridiculous I could say to myself. I put her bags in the room right next to the bath. I'm going to put my big radio up there. And this. What's that? Don't you remember when I sent for them two-way telephones from that catalog? I'm going to run a wire from her window down to this. Then she'll be able to call down for room service. We'll make out like we got a switchboard. Get it? Oh, boy, are we going to get it. I can't go through with it. I'm going to tell her the truth. It's the only way. Okay. Well, maybe you're right. She probably won't close the hotel. She'll be satisfied just to send me to jail. You're working on me now. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. They won't keep Uncle Joe on that rock pile more than a couple of months. In fact, with my heart, I may not live that long. Don't write, you old faker, you. Get your tail out from between your legs. I'll do my best. Maybe we can't make Mrs. Stroud think that this is a first-class luxury hotel. Kate, you'll never regret it. I'm going to run up to her room, install this telephone in that big radio of mine, and this is going to be fun. <laughs> Uncle Joe? Yeah? You're cuckoo. <laughs> Makes one to know what. Miss Bradley? Cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> My mind was wandering. Uh, how was dinner? Oh, wholesome country cooking, typical of the region. Well, so far, this seems to be the primitive inn I've always imagined. I can't believe it contains the lavish facilities described in your brochure. We try to keep it primitive at night. You'll see all the lavish stuff in the morning. <laughs> I thought you served dinner in the crystal room. Oh, boy. <laughs> Crystal room's closed for repairs. A few crack crystals. Uh, you know about crystals, uh, you, you just look cross-eyed at them and they cry. Uh, I see. Uh, well, I think I'll go up to my room and take a bath. Oh, may I have my key? Oh, yeah, of course. There we are. Thank you. Hey, Ma, did you see this? Oh, my goodness. That salesman from Ogden is taking a bath, and Mrs. Stroud thinks that's her private bathroom. Bobby Joe, stop her. Tell her anything. Show her your snapshots. I gotta go up the back steps and get that salesman out of the bathroom. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Stroud! Mrs. Stroud! Oh, oh, they call her frivolous. Fire! Fire! Motel's on fire! What's going on? Mrs. Stroud's coming up to take a bath. Oh, gee, Josephat, I forgot about the private bath. Yeah, now, I'll get him out of here, and you go through the bedroom and clean up that bath, you hear? Fire! What fire? Where? 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 Downstairs. You go down the back stairs and wash off the suds. <laughs> well, Mrs. Stroud, don't you want to see any more pictures? You can show me the rest of your pictures later. I'm going to take my bath. Uh, hello, Mrs. Stroud. Uh, welcome to the second floor. I uh, say you're ready for your bath, Mrs. Stroud. <laughs> You certainly do get around. Are you all right? Oh, yes, yes, it's just when I run up the steps too fast, sometimes I kind of get the bends. Hi, Miss Stroud. I just put the big radio in your room. Radio? Oh, I suppose you don't get television here. Well, I saw it in Greenville once, and I didn't get it there either. It's a real good radio, though. Once in a while, she'll quit on you. 
But you just kick her in the side, you usually bring her around. I kicked a lot of good entertainment out of that set. <laughs> now, Mrs. Todd, you, you go ahead and take your bath and have a nice soak and a good night's sleep, and we'll see you in the morning. Yes, indeed. Need anything, just pick up the phone. Yeah, would you like a bowl of fruit with some peaches and a few bananas? Yeah, that's a good idea. How about a couple of nuts? Yes, how about that? <laughs> better uh -oh. suppose mrs stroud wants to make a phone call and she finds out we don't have any telephone wires and that that phone on the wall is just to give the hotel class keep your mind cheerful she's leaving the first thing in the morning she won't have time to see anything you have to take our word for it make you feel better well where's the gun it's a rattler that's the phone mrs stroud maybe she wants me to come up and kick the radio but what do I do? Pick it up. Make out like your switchboard. Hello? S -s switchboard speaking. <laughs> Give her room service, please. Uh, uh, just a moment. You'll connect her. Just a moment. I'll connect you. <laughs> Good evening. Room service. <laughs> well, a glass of warm milk? Right away, Mrs. Stroud. Good night. Nothing to it. <laughs> it wasn't hard. It was sort of fun. <laughs> Go ahead. She probably wants to order some crackers with the milk. Good evening. What? Just a moment. Room service? No, Chicago. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, what did I say? I'm only good for room service. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Stroud? What number? Randolph 61599. Just a moment. Uncle Joe. I don't understand it. Usually in emergencies like this, I can manage to come up with a brainstorm. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, Mrs. Uh, Stroud. Uh, there was a storm on the other side of the mountains, and some of the telephone lines are down. <laughs> well, yes, uh, if they get it fixed tonight, I'll... Oh, in the morning. Yes, fine. Good night. You're going to congratulate me? You mean for being smart enough to have me around? Well, I was great on room service. <laughs> Stroud. All right. What's she doing up so early? She'll be down in ten minutes. She'd like somebody to take her on a tour so she can see the tennis courts, swimming pool, bowling alley, indoor ice skating rink, and steam rooms. <laughs> steam rooms? Listen, I got an idea. Oh, I'll bet it won't top steam rooms. Now listen, if we do it right, we can get Mrs. Stroud on that train by 8.30 and have her convinced that we got all the things it says we've got in that brochure. Now, here's what we're going to do. It'll never work. Well, if everybody does like she's supposed to, it'll work. Oh, I'm so nervous. Steam rooms. <laughs> well, a man's got to have a dream. Conrad Hilton started with a dream. If it didn't print it up and have it mailed to Mrs. Stroud. <laughs> Here she comes. Battle stations. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Stroud. <laughs> Did you sleep well? Very well, thank you. Um, are you going to show me around the grounds? Oh, yes, I am. But um, first, I want you to see a most unusual and fancy elevator right over here. <laughs> most folks don't appreciate how charming this elevator is. Why, it doesn't even work. Well, darned if you didn't put your finger right on it. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to step in here and get the full flavor. <laughs> morning. Oh, morning, young lady. Uh, the tennis courts are to your right. <laughs> Have a good game. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yes, the elevator. Uh, pardon me. I think... 
think I hear someone on the bowling alley. <laughs> Folks, no bowling until after 10 o'clock. Thank you for your cooperation. Now, where were we again? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I wanted to point out certain things about... Pardon me. I wonder if that Billy Stebbins is on the indoor ice skating rink again. <laughs> Billy Stebbins, you're going to have to quit making those fast stops. You're cutting up the ice something awful. Now, stop it and slow down. Billy Stebbins, I said, slow down. <laughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> Isn't that skating rink a little close to the bowling alley? Uh, but, yeah, but, but it, it works out. You see, it, uh, it keeps the bowlers cool, and you automatically lose the game if you knock over a ice skater. <laughs> I think I'd like to see that skating ring. Me too. We'll see it in a little while, but first I want you to see some of the historical facts in our lobby. <laughs> now. Hold still now. Well, lady, you're supposed to use the back stairs when coming from the swimming pool. Sorry. <laughs> Yes. Now, over here, Mrs. Stroud. Oh, good morning, Miss Smith. How was the golf course today? Just lovely. Eighteen charming holes. But, of course, we blondes have more fun than anybody. Isn't she the same young lady who just went out to play tennis with a blonde wig on? That was her cousin. Is anybody using the steam room? No, dear. Have a good steam. <laughs> I'm sorry about all the interruptions, Mrs. Stroud, but I just remembered. Miss Smith's the one who always leaves the steam door open. Excuse me. There's no steam. Where's the steam? Oh, I guess it cooled off. Close the door, Miss Smith. You're wasting the steam. Uh, Miss Smith, the steam's gone all over the place. <laughs> Just got to have a look in there. <laughs> and what else did she threaten? I told you about closing us up and putting us in jail. What else is there? Where's Uncle Joe? He went up to romance Mrs. Stroud. Romancer? <laughs> That'll never work. Well, he's desperate. He says he won't let anyone close up this hotel. Well, I'd sure like to hear what goes on in that room. Oh, me too. Now, girls, you're not going to listen outside that door like common snoops. Mom. Gee whiz. Going to do it like ladies with your mother along. <laughs> you mean you don't believe I love you more than I've ever loved anyone else before? No. If I'm lying, may my nose drop off. <laughs> I wish I could believe that. Oh, you, you just ain't trying. What attracted you to me? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was that little glint of mischief in your eye, or that little laugh that crinkles up your nose. <laughs> oh, you're just an old faker. <laughs> All right, I give up. If I confess to lying and false advertising, will you promise just to blast at me and not hurt Kate and her girls? You mean those three girls are her daughters? Yes, ma'am. And they don't have any father. And Kate's killing herself, giving them a good bringing up and an education and doing the work of six persons running this hotel. And if she was to lose it, and I felt I was responsible, well, I just wouldn't feel like living. Darn. I can't hear a sound through this door. I hear talking, but I can't make out words. Concern those honest, solid, early American builders. <laughs> then you won't write anything bad about us in your column? I'm not a monster. You should have told me the truth yesterday. Well, you closed that hotel in Greenville, and while well, you were making monster noises at Willie the cab driver. <laughs> well, I guess my bark is a lot worse than my bite. 
And that fellow in Greenville deserved to be closed up. <laughs> Is that the little laugh that crinkles my nose? <laughs> You're adorable. <laughs> You're a prince among women. <laughs> I'm going to tell Kate and the girls the good news. Oh, good. I'm glad you're all here. Uncle Joe, what happened? Well, you can stop worrying about Mrs. Stroud. Then she's not closing us up after all. Thank goodness. Well, it's nice to see you all so happy. Thanks to you, dear lady. Oh, we're so grateful. Oh, you should be grateful to Uncle Joe. <laughs> oh, that handsome devil. Did it crinkle that time? Well, Mrs. Stroud, I just... Oh, call me Gladys. Gladys. I'll be expecting you in Centerville Saturday night. You're escorting me to my class reunion. Oh, I've got so many plans for us. I'll tell you all about it on the way to Hooterville. Bye, -bye everyone. Bye. <laughs> Poor Uncle Joe. He's really too young to go steady. <laughs> Junction. Junction.